Thank you for joining today. I'm Katarina Schlaus. I'm the Global Lead for Programmatic, and I'm here today with Sarah Radin, who is the Global Lead for Auto Bidding, and Joe Larkin, who is the Global Lead for Auto Targeting. In the age of real-time bidding, programmatic, and a diverse display ecosystem, we're happy to discuss display automation today with you, which is a real-time solution. Advertisers and agencies are hesitant to opt in uh, GDN auto bidding, and so we are here to demystify and make you understand that you can really benefit from using this solution. We think that our algorithmic optimization uh, can help you achieve goals and facilitate by decreasing workload and time spent. Let's get started. Um, to real-time automation, we want to give you an overview of best practices, vision, and how it all works. All right. Thanks so much, Katarina. Appreciate it. Uh, so we want to start off just talking about how we view the automation suite. So this starts with conversion tracking. We want to make sure that you have conversion tracking implemented, and we use all the conversion data you give us to manage your bids and manage your targeting for you. So we want to start off focused on the automated bidding piece. So we want to get you onto enhanced CPC, and then really focus on improving your bidding efficiency, getting you more conversions for every dollar you're spending with us. So from eCPC, we go to target CPA and target ROAS. And then once you're stable and you're comfortable with auto bidding, we want to try to extend into mid funnel and get you more conversions for the same price. And that's where auto targeting comes in. We have a couple different flavors of auto targeting that I'll touch on a little bit later. Automation saves you time and also increases your efficiency. Typically, when using auto bidding, we see a 20% improvement in spend, a 13% improvement in ROI, and a savings of two to three hours per week. With auto targeting, we see a 20 to 50% average increase in spend while maintaining ROI with no additional optimization needed from you. Now we're going to talk a little bit about two of the products that we think would be most beneficial for you to use in the auto bidding suite. Enhanced CPC uses your conversion tracking to predict the likelihood of a conversion in each individual auction. We bid up or down up to 130% and down to negative 100% based on the likelihood to convert. We recommend that all GDN campaigns with conversion tracking start on eCBC. Typically, on average, we see that eCBC bidding versus manual CPC bidding drives 8% more volume. Next, we move on to CPA. If you drive over 50 per conversions per campaign in a month, we recommend moving your campaign over to Target CPA. With Target CPA, we look at each individual auction to maximize the number of conversions at your CPA target. When you think about using Target CPA, you can typically expect, on average, 13% better CPA performance than with manual CPC bidding. We also have a product called Target ROAS. If you're thinking about passing us conversion values, you should use Target ROAS because in addition to integrating your efficiency and performance metrics, we also look at the individual value of a conversion. And once you're set on target CPA or target ROAS, that's when we want to try to get more traffic and more conversions for the same price. So as a starting point, we have conservative auto-targeting, where you can just check a box in the UI. And we'll try to extend your traffic a little bit. And we typically see around a 20 to 30% lift in conversions at a very comparable CPA or ROI. Uh, once you have conservative auto-targeting enabled, let that run for a couple weeks. Make sure you like the quality of traffic. And if you still want even more traffic, you can move into aggressive auto-targeting where we'll give you even more expansion. And we typically see around a 50% lift in conversions on top of what you're already doing. The one important point to note here is that we do use your conversion data to drive this expansion. Mm -hmm. So especially for aggressive auto-targeting, we want to make sure you have enough conversions. We typically say you should have 100 conversions at the account level before you go to aggressive auto-targeting. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the intersection of signals and your bid. So in each individual auction, we not only consider your bid, but also the signals that you see here. We use signals from your site, such as how recently a user left, how many pages they viewed, and sites they previously visited. We also use demographic data, such as age and gender, the location of the person, and the device that they're on, as well as other signals, such as time and day of week, interest of the user, ad performance, and ad format. When you're thinking about setting up your campaigns, it's important to note that the more data we have for auto bidding, the better and more efficient we typically are. At each individual ad group, when we have 15 conversions, we tend to see more performance fluctuation and slower reaction to changes such as bid or new creative. 
Therefore, when you're setting up your campaigns, we recommend you put as much targeting and in, 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 in any individual ad group as possible so that we're as efficient as possible. You can see that at 100 conversions over a month in an, any individual ad group or up to 500, you'll see very few performance fluctuations and our reaction time to changes will be very quick. So on the auto-targeting side, I wanted to spend a little bit of time just demystifying what auto-targeting is and what we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, so we have a couple different types of auto-targeting. On the conservative side, we do expansion on display keyword campaigns or remarketing campaigns. So on a remarketing campaign, when you check the box, what we're actually doing is we look at the user list that you're targeting and the audience you're targeting, and we run a lookalike expansion. So we try to find other users out there on the display network that have very similar browsing characteristics that also have a very high probability of converting. And when we find those users, we'll serve ads and we'll extend your ads to those users to try to get you more conversions with that relevant audience. And with this, we typically see around a 20% lift in conversions at a very comparable CPA, typically plus or minus 5%. Uh, it's really important to note that these performance metrics are averages. Mm -hmm. uh, what you see in your campaign is really going to depend on configuration, but this is typically what we see. Uh, on the keyword targeted campaigns, it's really the same concept, but we do it slightly differently. So instead of looking at a user list, we actually crawl the landing page in the website. And from that, we try to figure out what type of advertiser you are, what contextual signals are on the landing page, and we build a list of keywords that are semantically relevant. Mm -hmm. And then we take the top performing keywords and the highest performing keywords, and we target those for you. So it's the same concept, just employed slightly differently. And with these, we typically see around a 10% lift in conversions at a very, very tight CPA. So that's the conservative piece. Then we also have aggressive auto-targeting, which used to be called display campaign optimizer. And with this, we're looking at your performance history across all GDN. And then we use as many signals as we can get. So we look at the landing page. We look at your user lists. And we try to do as much mid-funnel targeting as possible. Mm -hmm. And with this, we see around a 50% lift in conversions and a slightly higher CPA. Great. So now we're going to focus on some frequently asked questions as well as some best practices for display auto bidding. So as Joe mentioned at the beginning, setting up uh, conversion tracking is the most important part in getting started with auto bidding or auto targeting. Mm -hmm. So when you think about using conversion tracking, if you have a concrete goal such as a call, a lead, or a sale on your website, we recommend using AdWords conversion tracking in order to track that. If you don't have any of those present on your site, you can use smart goals with Google Analytics, which will allow you to use on-site behavior to track uh, concrete or uh, other metrics as well and bid against those. As I mentioned previously, we always recommend starting with eCPC bidding. Mm -hmm. If you have enough conversions in order to move tar target CPA, so we would recommend about 50 in one month per campaign, then we recommend starting with a CPA when you switch to CPA bidding that aligns with your historical CPA in order to maintain the volume of your campaign. Once you switch over to eCPC or CPA, we recommend running for at least two weeks without making any changes. That will allow you to see the best possible performance as well as to allow the system to learn. If you do need to change your bid, we recommend limiting those bid changes to plus or minus 20% and to wait a week before evaluating the results of the bid change. If you want to update your ad creative or add new assets, we recommend doing that one at a time and if possible, never to pause down all existing ads in an ad group. So on the auto-targeting side, uh, auto-targeting runs on top of auto-bidding, so mm -hmm. all the same auto-bidding best practices apply. Anything that you would want to do for auto-bidding, you should do the same for auto-targeting. Uh, on top of that, a couple other ones to keep in mind. So it's really important to be patient during the ramp-up process. Auto-targeting takes a little while to learn. Mm -hmm. So when you enable it, give it one to two weeks to stabilize, and then evaluate performance. The second one is to make sure that you have enough budget. So we typically recommend setting the daily budget to about 20 times the target CPA. This ensures that your ads are actually eligible to serve throughout the whole day and that we can actually explore new inventory for you. If you have a heavily constrained budget, especially on the auto bidding side, it tends to lose some efficiency as we can't actually run the ads all day. Uh, the other one is making sure that when you look at performance, you review at the campaign level or the ad group level instead of trying to parse out auto-targeting traffic separately. So we're going to try to keep the entire campaign at the CPA that you want. Mm -hmm. So it's very frequent to see slightly different CPAs for auto-targeting versus what you're doing manually, and that's totally normal. We just want to make sure that after you enable it, one to two weeks later, the CPA is where you want it at the campaign level. And the very last one is if you're considering using aggressive auto-targeting, we do a lot of exploration for this. 
And if you want better control over this, you can actually move this into its own campaign, give it a separate CPA bid, separate budget, separate creatives, and just treat that as an exploratory or pure acquisition campaign. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what we foresee for auto bidding and auto targeting moving into the second half of 2016 and even beyond that. <laughs> so we're always working to improve the product, both with your feedback as well as the feedback we hear from other advertisers. One of the things we're most focused on is reducing volatility as well as learning time so that you're as efficient as possible from day one. We're also working on servicing as much transparency as possible and as much insight as possible directly in the AdWords interface. We hope you got some transparency into the products today and we want to make sure we are continuing that. We are also working to automate even more, so hopefully this will result in additional efficiencies in your campaigns as well as additional time savings. We are now going to go through some frequently asked questions so you can learn a little bit more about auto-targeting and auto-bidding. So Sarah, you were mentioning that your starting point um, should be eCPC. How do we enable eCPC? Sure, that's a great question. So you can see in this screenshot the way to enable enhanced CPC in the AdWords UI. So it's actually just a checkbox. You still will set your CPC bid, and then you'll check enable enhanced CPC, which will allow us to have the flexibility in bidding that I mentioned, where we're able to bid up to 130% and down to negative 100% based on the likelihood of any individual auction to convert. And you also mentioned CPA bidding. Can yes. you let us know how we enable this? Absolutely. So in the settings tab, when you select your bid strategy, you would select focus on conversion and then set your target CPA. Joe, would you yeah. mind telling us how to enable auto-targeting? Yeah, sure. So auto-targeting is uh, an ad group level setting. So mm -hmm. you would go into the ad group that you want to enable it on, click into the Display Network tab, into the Targeting tab, and then you'll have this checkbox here where you can check the box to explore, and then you have a radio button that you can toggle between conservative or aggressive auto-targeting. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that mm -hmm. um, there can be a switch from conservative to aggressive auto-targeting. Could you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, definitely. So I mentioned that we want conservative auto-targeting to run you know, for a couple weeks, make sure that you like the traffic, make mm -hmm. sure it's performing well. Once you have that comfort level with conservative auto-targeting and you hit 100 conversions in the mm -hmm. account, that's when you should feel comfortable making the jump to aggressive auto-targeting. OK, so that's a great moment to switch. And then where can we see the traffic from auto-targeting? Great on? question. So uh, we're working on making this more transparent, to Sarah's point. So right now, if you want to see it split out, you can actually go into the placement performance report mm -hmm. and click the segment menu, and then segment by targeting mode. And that will split out traffic between your manual targeting and what we found for you with auto-targeting. OK, great. Um, so I think we demystified a little bit about <laughs> automation um, today. I mean, for our SMB advertisers, it's definitely something that they should explore. Um, so I want to say thank you for mm -hmm. your time. And then let us know if you have any questions. Great. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>